Hello, welcome to Everyday HDR. Today we're going to talk about chromatic aberrations, and I'm surprised I haven't talked about this before, because chromatic aberrations are a pain in the butt to deal with. Uh, and they usually happen in high contrast areas, where you're going from uh, a dark area to a light area, with a lens that maybe isn't a $2,000 lens. You know, for me, I have the budget $800 lenses, which aren't really quite budget, but you know, that's what they call it. So how to compensate for this chromatic aberration that you're getting. Um, the technical term for chromatic aberration is the failure of the lens to focus all the colors on the same point. It's the refractive index for the different wavelengths of light that are happening in the scene that you're photographing. I kind of ad-libbed that from the definition that I got from Wikipedia. For me, that means you get this cyan and magenta crap going on in your images. So how do I fix that cyan and magenta crap? Uh, because for me, I'm not going to be able to buy a $2,000 lens. So I'm going to go... This is something that not only affects your regular photographs, it also affects your HDR photographs, because when you take five raw exposures of this same scene and you have this much chromatic aberration going on, it's going to affect your final product in HDR. And in this one, it didn't affect it too bad, but we're still going to go into how to fix it. So go back to the original photograph because that's where we see the most cyan and magenta go to filter lens correction and this is something that's brand new in Photoshop CS5 so if you're using any Photoshop before this you might have to go with my next technique on how to get rid of this so I'm going to go custom and go to fix red slash cyan fringe and that's those little buggers those little chromatic aberrations manifest themselves as fringe on your photographs so you're just gonna pull these sliders in and out now it's done a great job of fixing that let's let's go ahead and look at the difference here so we're gonna press OK and look at the difference in the history it's a big difference but what have we also done we've changed the perspective of the photo so that it fixes the fringe and the uh, the cyan and magenta fringe so what that also means is that you're gonna have to do some sharpening to fix the areas that you threw out of perspective. Now it looks great though. The difference looks great. So we'll just go ahead and stick with that and then I would throw a high pass sharpen on that but for the sake of the tutorial I'm gonna go ahead and go on and move on. So the same thing can be done here to fix this just magenta that we have here. For some reason this HDR did a good job of getting rid of the cyan but had a magenta problem. So again we're gonna go to filter, go to lens correction. We're gonna zoom in on that area that's got problems and we're going to move our fringe over and we've done a pretty good job of getting rid of it there's still some magenta there and what I would do to fix that I uh, will show you on the next image so let's go ahead and move over to these quarters that I showed you the other day so this is the original image of those quarters uh, before the HDR and this is the HDR of the quarter what I've noticed is that these chromatic aberrations happen more dramatically at lower focal lengths. So the higher the focal length, the less chromatic aberrations you have. And that's just what I've seen in my experience. So it's not so bad in the original, but look at the HDR. We've got some serious stuff going on in here. So let's go to uh, filter, lens correction, and see if we can't fix that chromatic aberration stuff that's happening in the areas that, are, that they should be white. So let's try and move the fringe. And it looks like as we make these corrections, it's not doing anything for us. So this looks more like a noise reduction problem than a chromatic aberration problem. So how do I fix color noise? Well, you can use reduce noise and go into the color noise aspect of it, but what I found is it doesn't actually clean up the noise as crisp as you can if you use the saturation filter. So, or adjustment layer, pardon me. So go to your adjustment layer, click on hue saturation. Now you see we've got some magenta going on here. We've got some cyan, possibly green going on here. So let's go to where it says master. Let's click on magenta. And we're gonna reduce the saturation of magenta all the way down to zero. So, or negative 100, sorry. Um, what this has done is it's taken the magenta color and turned it 50% gray. 
And for this area being a highlight, I don't want it to be 50% gray. I want it to be a lighter color, 50% gray. So now I'm going to move the lightness of that magenta over. And now I'm also going to go into the cyans and see what happens with the cyans. So when we go into cyan and we move the cyan over and also make it lighter because we don't want that to be 50% gray, we see that we've lost some of the color noise in the cyan and magenta. And that's typically where your fringing happens from chromatic aberrations. So this is how I know that it's not just chromatic aberrations, it's color noise, because I have got, I've got this green stuff going on here also. So how do I fix that? Same way I fixed it before. I'm just going to go into the greens now and drop the saturation on the greens and pull up the lightness on the greens. And there we go. But if you go a little deeper, you see that we've got blue color noise in areas that should be 50% gray. So let's go to the blues and just make those 50% gray. And let's do the same thing for yellow and go to 50% gray and change the lightness a little bit. And now we've got red noise. So let's change the reds down to 50% gray. And now let's look what we've got. We've lost all color in the photo. And why? Because we took every color in the photo and made it 50% gray with the modification of a little bit of lightness here and there. So how do we pull back that color of the wood in the background? It's pretty simple. You're just going to click on the mask that's next to the hue saturation, this little layer mask right here, and you're going to click on black and click on your brush, and you're just going to paint those areas back in with black. And this is typical masking, pretty simple. And now you're going to have your, your quarter the way it should be. It's more of a silver look right now than it is a uh, chromatic aberration and noise mess. So, for the sake of continuing to paint making this perfect, let's go back to this image. So this is fixing um, color noise. Just go into hue saturation and play with the color noise that is there and drop it and you're pretty good. So let's go back to this image. So how can we fix the color noise that is or, uh, the fringing that's happening here? We didn't quite get all the fringing rid of, so we can go to hue saturation, go into magenta, and we can drop the magenta. Oh, I was stuck on the master. Look at that. So let's go back. Oh, I was moving a little too fast. Let's change the saturation to zero, and let's click on magenta this time. So now that we click on magenta this time, and we drop our saturation, you can see that we're starting to take the magenta out of that area. And it doesn't really affect the rest of the, 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 the photo. So the rest of the fringing that's happening here isn't too bad for me. As far as printing is concerned, and as far as putting on the web, I would still do it. But if you're really tedious and you want to get rid of it, you can go to your reds and you can start dropping the saturation in your reds and that'll get rid of it. But what you're also doing is dropping the saturations globally in the entire image. So there's where painting comes in again. If you want that nice color on these rocks, you're going to have to paint it back in. So you're going to click on the mask that is next to your hue saturation and click on your brush or press B for brush and paint black on those areas where you want your magentas to come back in or your reds to come back in, pardon me. And there you have it. That is color noise reduction and chromatic aberration reduction 101. Thank you. Have a great weekend.